Hey and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Peaches Petit and my channel is going to be about very important talks and a little bit of style and fashion. Uh, very important talks will hopefully be once a week and the fashion and style side of it will be once a month. Um, and also guys, one of the best things that has been put out there is Peace of Mind with Taraji P. Henson. Her Facebook show, all about mental health, and she also addresses suicide. It was a blessing that she actually addressed this. Um, let's get straight into it. My topic for this week is about suicide. Very important topic. It's a very important topic all of the time. So not just now. I know that right now is more provident because of everything that's going on and maybe cases have risen and whatnot because of how people are feeling lonely and obviously the financial burdens and stresses of everything that's going on right now. So it's very important, but it's important all the time because all year round, every day, there's somebody who will have that negative chain of thought and feel that way. And obviously there's plenty of people that fully carry that through and manage to succeed to let that thought and that feeling overtake them and that is exactly what it is it's a thought it's a feeling and it does go away okay and i know when you're in that bad place and oh sorry by the way let me just exclaim i'm not a psychologist I am not medically trained in any type of way. I'm just going to be talking from my own personal experiences or just my own feelings upon the subject or matter. And hopefully it can help somebody else out there. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, um, it is a thought and they are just feelings and they do go away. Thoughts are like boomerangs. They come and they go continuously. And sometimes you can go to sleep and wake up in the morning and feel totally different. Sometimes it'll take a week, sometimes it'll take a month. It doesn't matter when, but at some stage, there will become a day that you didn't feel how you felt on that day, the day before, or you'll be glad. If you are a suicide survivor, or you really thought that you could follow that through, on the days where you don't feel like that because there will be that day you will be so thankful and grateful to your own self that you that didn't actually follow that step through most people i find that feel that way and want to commit suicide don't actually want to die they genuinely don't want to die they just want to be seen they want to be heard they feel misunderstood, they feel like no one's really listening to what they're saying or they feel ashamed, they feel like people are disregarding their feelings like, oh, get over it or be strong or, oh, it can't be that bad. I understand when people say those type of things to you, how it's going to make you feel even more worse and alone because you feel like you're just feeling and thinking and going through these things by yourself. Um, and obviously the most important thing of all is that you're clearly in pain. You are in so much pain that you can bear to imagine. And you think that it's going to be like that forever. You think that other people don't have those type of feelings. But I guarantee that most people at some stage of their life would have felt that way doesn't matter whether even if you're religious and you shouldn't have those type of thoughts or you know your mom a parent if you have loads of responsibilities at some stage that would have crossed your mind if you're having a really hard time and you're in so much pain you just want the pain to stop that's what it is it's not that you don't want to be here it's just that you want the pain to stop and you haven't figured that out yet and that's okay i think one of the most important things to do as well is cry okay i know it's supposed to be frowned upon or makes you feel weak or in 
embarrassed to cry but I'm telling you it's one of the best things that you could ever do when you cry it's like a release it's like letting it all out and go cry cry till you can't cry no more I'm telling you cry till there is nothing left that's what you've got to do to make yourself feel better again or make yourself feel like you've got some type of hope or that life is worth living in general do it it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter if you're a teenager it doesn't matter if you're a man a woman it does not matter cry um i have a book that my auntie actually gave to me and until i decided to do um this video today i actually forgot about this it's just on the shelf a bookshelf and i completely forgot i had this book but there was times in my life um as a teenager that this actually did help me and i'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot of help and use now that i remember that i have it and the reason that maybe remember this book is talking about crying because i remember i was the same way as a teenager as a kid i didn't ever cry even as a kid i didn't cry i did not like crying i personally did see it as a form of weakness i would never want to give somebody else the satisfaction to know that's how much I'm upset by something they did or said or I just saw it as being weak and I just wouldn't quite, do you know what? I didn't even want to seem weak to myself I was so busy trying to be strong all the time that I couldn't even cry around myself because I didn't want to be weak but it's not obviously as I got older I unlearned that with my own mind and just by a little saying in this book as well um, it says it is more dangerous to weep inside my mind than to weep in the open the open tears can easily wipe away but secret tears create scars and from the day that I read that I even like read it out and stuck it on my fridge I had to teach myself how to be emotional how to be vulnerable so I would say maybe my late teens yeah late teens early 20s i had to teach myself to be emotional and allow myself to feel and to actually have feelings because for a long time i wouldn't and then it was it would bottle up inside it was it was like all different type of feelings anger hurt sadness pain disappointment re um, abandonment rejection anything that i ever felt I just keep it inside like I don't ever remember really talking to anybody about it it was just something that was building inside of me like so much stuff post-traumatic stress and family stuff that I just never share with anybody or talk about so it was just stacking and 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 stacking it just kept stacking to the point sometimes I would feel like I don't want to be here no more or there was a time I self-harmed a couple of times because I'm in so much pain and frustration and I just didn't know how to let it out or I didn't want to tell nobody so a couple of times I did self-harm because it was like a form of a release and again I don't want to hurt myself I don't want scars I don't want marks on my body I don't want attention and that's another thing people assume that teenagers or kids or anything that ever self-harm is about attention seeking and it isn't it's the opposite it's because they can't express themselves and they just they're too afraid to really say how they feel or how they think and sometimes you don't really want to admit it to yourself you don't want to admit to yourself how you're feeling because if you feel vulnerable and weak you you may not have the tools to know how to cope and work your way through the situation in your life or just you as a person you don't have the tools you don't have those tools until you get older until you tend to an adult or if you do seek therapy or counseling or if parents are getting their children into like some type of help beforehand because unless somebody's offering it to you or you're researching it yourself you're not gonna know you're just out here surviving just like everybody else just rolling with the punches normal everybody has negative thoughts and feelings sometimes 
it's absolutely normal to sometimes think this life is too hard I don't know what I'm doing I don't know how I'm gonna get through certain situations sometimes you just run out of hope yeah freedom is all about what's in your mind it's not about cutting ropes it's not about whatever's going on around you it genuinely is all in your mind it's you have to learn how to control your mind nobody else can do that for you no amount of advice or friends therapists could probably give you tools on how to manage it but it all and at the end of the day starts with your own self you really have to just take your time and get to learn and understand yourself understand your triggers understand the what makes you happy what makes you unhappy it's something that you have to learn along the way yeah and don't feel ashamed or guilty about feeling that way and I know it's easy because that's what happens you may feel negative and then you're you're going on the downhill spiral because you're then going to feel guilty that you feel that way you feel angry that you feel that way you feel frustrated with yourself so again more self-hate that's what it really comes down to you're just self-hating when the rest of the world probably doesn't even look at you like that the rest of the world does not see the negative side to things or you or your, the way you see yourself is not how somebody else sees you. It's just how you see yourself. Don't listen to those people. Don't listen to anyone who belittles your feelings. Don't listen to anyone that makes you feel crazy, like I said, or tells you that you're crazy, should I say. Don't listen to them. And what I would say to you is, usually when somebody deals with you in that type of way, when you're trying to open up, they're not ready for it. And again, it's not about you. Whatever they're saying to you is not really about you. It's that they are uncomfortable. If you are coming to a friend or a family member with being genuine and being real about how you really feel about yourself or life or your emotions or your feelings, whatever it is, when you bring that to somebody that just has never either been through certain things themselves it's going to be hard for them to relate number one number two they are not ready it's not about you they are not ready to deal with that themselves they haven't even learned how to deal with that within their own life so it's hard when somebody else and the rawness and the realness is standing right in front of them it's uncomfortable so sometimes, some people will feel the need to just shut it down because they don't want to feel that way. They don't want to feel emotions or upset or whatever because most of us in life are usually trying to suppress them. So it's not about you. And sometimes it's okay. I think sometimes you can actually say to somebody, if, if you feel that you can, it's usually best to say, but actually, no, I am entitled to feel this way. It's my feelings, it's my body, it's my mind, it's my life, not yours. So if I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. That's up to me. And if I take two days, three days, four days, months, again, that's okay. Because it's my life, not yours. Everybody deals with things differently. So I would say to you, if you want to binge watch and watch Netflix and watch program after program to try and block things out a little, it's unhealthy. Of course it is. But if that's what makes you cope and helps you get through until one day you see a better side of things, then do it. Binge watching a TV program or weekend or for however long is a lot better then you're not being here at all. If you wanna get out of bed for a couple of days, then do it. If that's what you need, and that's what your body and your mind is telling you to do until you can build back up the strength to decide what you're going to do about the reasons why you feel the way you feel or whatever obstacles are in your life, again, they're not obstacles. You can just see them as stepping stones. 
until you can figure out a solution, do whatever you've got to do to make you feel at peace. And to make sure that you do not take that step where you complete what your mind is telling you at that time. If you don't want to eat, don't eat. I wouldn't say put yourself at health risk, but eat small portions. Like if you, I get it as well. When you're feeling that down or low, you don't have an appetite. When you eat, you feel sick or you get stomach pain. That's okay. Just eat a little bit of bread, bread and butter, toast, biscuits, have a cup of tea. You don't have to eat nothing major. I Like I said, it is unhealthy, but if you don't want to eat, don't eat. If you want to eat, eat. If you want to eat, overeat or eat too much, if you want to eat chocolate, cake, sweets, whatever it is. Again, if that makes you feel good at that moment in time, then do it. It's about the moment. It's about the moment and the time. But what matters is how long you stay there for. So it's okay to do those things. But there has to be a stage or a time that you can say today. But again, that's on your own terms. You will come to that conclusion by yourself. There will be a day when you say, I don't want to eat chocolate no more. Or this is making me feel sick. This is not making me feel good no more. The moment that something that makes you feel good or just blocks out life altogether stops feeling good will then be the day that you decide that this ain't working right now either or this just ain't working right now so what else can i do and you will come to those you'll work that out on your own it will work itself out and you will work yourself out Sometimes you can do it by yourself. Sometimes you just need family or friends if you've got a close network. Just people to talk to. That's it. And if you don't have someone to talk to, you can have a therapist. You go to the doctors and they'll get counsellor for you. Uh, nowadays, I will list everything below, but when it comes to Samaritans, if you're feeling that low, or you're feeling suicidal, there is Samaritans and other places out there that are willing to help and train to deal with mental health problems and stuff as such um, like I said I will list them all below you can even text them now these days counselors and therapists you don't have to physically go there you don't have to physically speak on the phone because sometimes you don't want to speak lots of times I don't want to speak and again that's okay too there's times if you don't want to speak don't speak put your phone on silent don't answer phone calls it's actually your choice it's your choice and until you realize that life is going to be difficult but sometimes you just got to say no i just need peace and i just need to be by myself and sometimes i can understand that can be worrying for family members or other people so you don't have to answer those phone calls all that time or if you really think that you're friends or family might be worried about you or you don't want them to keep pestering you or bothering you when you are just trying to be at peace all you have to do is send a text okay and just say today i'm just having so it's okay not to answer phone calls and if you're worried that your friends and family are going to be worried about you all you have to do is say sorry not responding to calls or messages today i need some peace of mind and rest thanks for understanding that's all you have to do and then for the rest of the day don't touch the phone if you don't want to meditation and again it isn't always about the music or the sitting positions meditating is sometimes just sitting quietly with nothing on the phone's on silent the tv's off and sometimes you sit there sometimes you just lay there and sometimes when your thought gets too much or it gets too noisy and too loud usually there's different strategies for that too because again thoughts never fully go away even if you're sitting quietly the more or louder your mind is going to sound sometimes um counting can be one there's probably other solutions as well but for me i count to four before i used to try and count to ten or whatnot it was it doesn't work that is just too long a period by the time i get halfway through or count to ten it just starts coming back again but 
for me recently I've realized that if I count to four I can manage it easier I literally my mind gets too loud I, can't, I just count to four I count to four over and over again and it just quiets it down it starts to rise back up the noise in my head I count to four it slowly comes out down until I just feel at a calm peaceful level feeling Another thing that can help you is look for positive quotes, that helps me quite a lot as well. Just seeing positive quotes, uh, if you're on social media, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, whatever, whatever, a book, buy a book of quotes, okay? It actually does help sometimes. You'll always find something that's relatable to you and your feelings or your situation at that time. And I know it's going to sound a bit cringy too, but if you need love, hold yourself. Sometimes hold your shoulders. Sometimes if there's no one else around or if you're lonely or you're by yourself, sometimes just to sit there like this or just rest your hand on your shoulder, just having that heaviness or that weight, again, can make you feel better. I know it's a bit cringe, but yeah, hold yourself. If there's no one else to hug you, hug yourself. Also, sometimes stroking or rubbing, sometimes I do that some when I'm uncomfortable or when I'm not feeling good. You know, sometimes I just stroke my neck, sometimes I just sit there and I stroke my neck while I'm watching TV. And again, it's just a calming feeling. It's skin on skin, it's touch, and it's coming from me, so it's self-love. If there's no one else around or there's no one else to give it to you or you don't trust anybody else, then it's a form of self-love. Love yourself. I know it sounds weird, but it can help. It can be comforting. Um, and another one. I know it sounds weird. Sometimes I just cut and hold my own breath. I could just be sitting, watching TV, and I'll just cut and hold my own breath. I know it sounds odd, but it's comforting. Or sometimes you can even hold your own hand, like this. Sometimes you can just put this hand in this and hold your own hand there's no one else there if you feel like no one else cares at that moment in time care about yourself show yourself some love i know it's not nice to be lonely and it's really hard being on your own but it really really does have to start within yourself like candles have a bath shower shave exfoliate get dressed up for no reason if you haven't got nothing to do it doesn't matter just get dressed up if that's what makes you feel good then do it so you can clean tidy listen to music like for me that's a big deal as well listening to music it really does lift my spirits and the other thing is that when you're feeling down or low or suicidal talk about it okay talk about it talk about it to somebody that you do trust and that you are you know relatively close to and if you don't have anybody then you should seek help you can look it up like i said i'll leave stuff down below um like i said you can even text there's people that you can text counselors where you don't have to physically see them or speak if you don't want to leave the house or you're feeling too emotional i can understand what that feels like when you feel so emotional like your emotional is just like right there that you don't even want to go outside because anything can trigger you it trigger you it can come out as anger or sometimes you just feel like just going to the supermarket you can just burst into tears for no reason so i understand why you might not want to go out sometimes or that makes you secluded or makes you feel lonely because you're scared of your own feelings but the best thing to do is feel them Feel them, let it be. Go through whatever you need to go through. Feel that pain. Like I said before, cry. If you need to. But just know that there will be a better day. It might not be today, but there will be a better day. Write feelings and thoughts down. Sometimes when stuff is just so overwhelming, you can't really get your thoughts collectively. So just write stuff down. Think, I'm feeling angry right now. I'm feeling upset right now. Or I'm feeling like I just can't 
take this no more or I don't want to be here no more. Take time and just stop whatever you're doing and write it down. Write down what you're actually upset or mad about. Sometimes you think, oh, I don't know. I just feel angry. I just feel upset. But once you start writing, it will be right there in plain sight in front of you. In front of you. Usually there is stuff that is going on. Once you start writing it, you'll see that these are the issues. These are the reasons why I'm feeling the way that I feel. And then you can start to work through them one by one on a, a solution of how to ease that feeling and pain or frustration. And for family and friends that want to help, I would just say, just be there. Like, don't judge. Don't try to give advice unless it's an art for or, you know, somebody's asked you to do that. Just listen. That's all somebody wants you to do sometimes is listen. It's not about being able to help or giving advice. Just the plain, simple fact that you are there and that you're listening is good enough. Call, text, to check up on them every now and then. And if they don't respond, don't get angry. Don't be frustrated and don't take it so personally. It's not about you. All you have to do is when somebody is not responding that you care about, and you know sometimes they'd be suffering with depression, just send them a text just to say, I love you, I care about you, I'm thinking about you, or you're on my mind. I just want you to know, you don't have to respond, I just want you to know that I care about you. And most important thing of all, just don't follow through what your mind is telling you to do. Do not follow it through, okay? It is just a thought and they are just feelings and feelings and thoughts are temporary. They don't stay. They come and they go. And it's about managing the feelings and the thoughts and turning them into positive. I know it's so cliche to keep saying that and I know plenty of people say that, but it really is about making those negative thoughts into positive thoughts. You just have to outbalance it. It's okay, but you just have to find a way of either balancing it and making the more positive thoughts possible. I just wanted to say as well that I came across a really powerful podcast. Um, it's a guy called Feel Better. It's called, it's called Feel Better with Ragan Chattering. I don't know if I said his name right. So apologies if I haven't, but. I listened to that podcast the other day and it was really insightful, really helpful. And he had a special guest on there, a 93 year old lady who is a Holocaust survivor. And she is a psychologist and she's an expert in um, traumatic, post traumatic stress. And her name is Dr. Edith Eager. She was super inspirational like she really did kind of teach you how it is a mind over matter and it's not about your emotions or feelings it's about your mind and what you tell your mind your mind is what controls everything else and that's how she survived and got through her terrible ordeal and horrific experience she is a holocaust survivor and she explains how she got through that and other things in her life. Truly amazing. Um, literally, my mind was blown just listening to her. And again, it doesn't matter what you're going through, what you feel, you'll be able to take some type of positivity just by listening to that podcast and listening to that lady um obviously she has a lot of wisdom and it's i found it really helpful um 
the way that she processed stuff around her in her mind to help her get through hard times and I get it like it can be done so that's it for today thank you for whoever is watching and is interested in this talk and these topics and that's it for today with VIT very important talks and I'll be back next week with another one my next up and coming video will be a mini view 